50 gig for free. Nice. Okay, now it's all coming together. No maximum hand size. Hello, good game. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're all having a magical day. Thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. Today, we'll be playing Magic the Gathering Arena Alchemy Best of One. Free Gate Restoration is the name of the deck. This is a Bant Venture or Dungeon build. Bant is the color combination of white, blue, and green. This is a fairly aggressive mid-range deck that counts on free casting from your library, which is a ton of fun, as I'm sure you're all aware. Casting cards for free, right? Really expensive ones like Seagate Restoration for seven. Sign me up. In today's video, we'll break down the deck list, talk about the strategies, the synergies in depth. Is the day, Junior. Demonstrate all of this in today's gameplay footage, and then finally wrap up with our deck review, final thoughts, and uh, the beautiful card of the day. I know you're all super excited about that. So leave a thumbs up on the, 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 the video and subscribe to the channel if you're looking for more Magic the Gathering Arena content just like this. Let's go! Alrighty, Freegate Restoration is the uh, name of the game here. And Seagate Restoration, if you're unfamiliar, is a seven drop sorcery that also has Seagate Reborn. Uh, the Reborn is played as the land, which is fantastic. You have to pay three life to have it come into play untapped. If not, Sorcery speed for seven. And again, we do have a way to free cast this, which we'll talk about in a second. Draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand, plus one. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. So, you know, it's not only the Seagate that we're looking to free cast. We also have the beautiful Amiria's Call, also for seven, acting in the same fashion as the land, but for a Plains or White Source. Sorcery speed on the backside, however, is a little bit different. Creating two 4-4 four, four White Angel Warrior creature tokens with flying. Non-angel creatures you control will gain indestructible until the end of turn. So, uh, you know, making two 4-4 four, four flyers, fantastic, and giving the rest of our field indestructible. You really can't complain about that, especially if you're casting it for free, which we will do with the uh, one and only. Let me get to a dungeon here. Um, dungeon of the Mad Mage. So this is our preferred dungeon progressing into Mad Wizard's Lair, draw three cards, reveal them, and then you may cast one of them without paying its mana cost, right? So this is how we'll be casting for free Emeria's Call and the Seagate Restoration without hindering our early game hand, because, you know, it sucks to get stuck with a hand of uh, expensive mana value cards, you know, five drops, six drops, seven drops, that you are just sitting on. Really, for the whole game, you may not even get to cast them if uh, you're against an aggro deck, right? So the... Modul lands, the call and the restoration, really are the best of both worlds because, you know, early game, it's a land to help you ramp into the rest of your deck. Uh, late game, it's a beautiful spell. And if you draw it in the process and cast it for free, well, it's the, really the best of both worlds here. So uh, that's kind of the motivation behind the deck. We do support Venture here as well because we do need to progress to that last room, which is the Mad Mage. And we'll be, you know, basically breaking the dungeon with Hama Pashar Rune Seeker. Um, I like to call her the Rune Seeker, because every time you enter a, a new room of a dungeon, the ability will trigger an additional time. So every dungeon room that we enter will now double trigger. So that Mad Mage triggering twice is just like, <laughs> holy Toledos, right? Um, and you know, it's a legendary, so only one in play at a time, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but running four copies because it will be a high priority target for your opponent to remove because the value that she provides to the deck is absolutely bonkers. Alrighty, so now that we know what we're doing with the deck, let's kind of fill around the edges here. Um, you know, fly for one, an enchantment aura, enchanted creature has flying, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, venture into a dungeon. This is fantastic, especially on uh, Yong T Malison for two. A 2-1, it cannot be blocked as long as it's the only attacker. Very good. But remember, it can only attack alone if you want it to be unblocked. And then whenever it deals combat damage to a player, venture into a dungeon. So if it's unblockable, you're getting combat damage, you'll venture into a dungeon every single turn. If you equip Fly to it, even though it's unblockable, you know, double evasion is kind of weird. But the double adventure uh, is very, very nice here. So that's quite enjoyable. We have the Selfless Paladin for three. It's a 3-3 three, three with Vigilance. When it enters or attacks, Venture. And then whenever we've completed a dungeon, all of our other creatures get plus one, plus one, which is really good. And then while we're completing our dungeons, because of this, we can focus on creating first treasures to ramp into our spells if we need to. 
Secondly, creating tokens because these tokens are going to get plus one, plus one, and that makes them much more effective. Moving on from that, we have Eliwick Tumblestrom for four and her emblem or uh, ultimate ability minus six. You get an emblem with creatures you control have trample and haste and get plus two plus two for each differently named dungeon that you've completed, right? So if we have the Paladin in play, that's plus one plus one on everything. Eliwick with the completed dungeon, that's going to, because obviously the Paladin needs it to be completed as well. Uh, so it's really gonna be plus three plus three. If you've completed two plus five, if you've completed all three dungeons, we're talking about plus seven plus seven haste and trample, let's go. So we're really looking to kind of turbo our way through these dungeons and complete them all if we can get Eliwick. However, that Mad Wizard's Lair is really my favorite to free cast, especially if we have that Rune Seeker to double it. All right, so Cursed Idol, created treasure and adventure, fantastic. We can also destroy artifacts or enchantments here at sorcery speed. The Gargoyle, a 0-3 when it enters venture, and as long as we've completed a dungeon, it will receive plus three and flying, which is you know, fairly decent. And then a little bit of counter magic, bar the gate, creature or planeswalker spell, and we venture at instant speed three, which is quite nice. And then some generic counter magic, because you know, not everything's creatures or planeswalkers, and we always love to counter with a syncopate for one plus X, instant speed countering target spell, unless its controller pays X. If that spell is countered this way, we will get to exile it instead of putting it into the graveyard, which is, you know, quite enjoyable here. Ramping through Find the Path for three Enchant Land. Enchant Land will tap to add two mana of any color, and we get the venture. So, you know, really, really good stuff here. And um, yeah, Eliwick can plus to venture organically, and she can also minus two to look at the top six cards of your library, revealing a creature card from among them into your hand. If it's a legendary, gain three life, and put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. So, you know, not fantastic, but again, if you're sitting on an empty hand, you don't need to venture because some of the creatures that we play venture. So, you know, not only are you getting a venture, but you're also getting a, a chump blocker. Um, however, you are minusing, removing yourself from the minus six on curve, right? If you plus, plus, minus, things are going to work out in your favor always. We have Dungeons Ascent here as well. We can tap it for one, tap an untapped legendary we control to venture at sorcery speed. We have the Paladin. We also have the Rune Seeker, both legendaries. Uh, that can tap to venture, which is quite nice. Really, really uh, doing some massive damage with that Rune Seeker, as that venture will uh, gain double value again, right? Lots of lands here, right? We've got uh, some cascading, some pathways, some farmlands, some branch lofts, some hedge gates, and some beaches uh, for your mana sake consistency. I don't know, right? Uh, keep in mind, you also do have the treasures, and you will also have the find the path, which is cool. And then if we look at some of the other uh, dungeon shenanigans here, uh, Goblin uh, Bazaar, create a treasure token, right? If we are doubling down on that, creating two treasures, we can kind of keep playing, keep venturing. That's going to be very good. So keep in mind uh, which way you're progressing through the dungeon. We love treasures, we love tokens, and we love to free cast things, right? Easy lemon squeezy. That's the deck. Fair warning, do not try this deck at home. It's for advanced players only. <laughs> we uh, we did our best and we got bullied uh, in an old school fashion today. Uh, kind of bullying where we got hit a lot more than we hit anyone else. And uh, But we did get a win. We got you know some cool stuff for you guys today. Sacrificing our accounts for your entertainment purposes. So make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this shenanigans and uh, yeah, <laughs> enjoy today's gameplay footage and we'll be back to wrap up. With a final thoughts, deck review, and, you know, card of the day, go. Alrighty then, going first. One of my favorite cards in the hand. It's, you know, it's worth the risk it. Uh, we're going to try to take the biscuit. We'll see if we can get there, though. Uh, this can be a blue source. This is a white source. So this will be our one and only green source. Oh, Tenacious Pop. Cool. I see you, bro. Put that defender out. Like, be, what, 4-4? Four, four. Batty. Um, and leave the gargoyle. So if we have the gargoyle, we're going to do the Fandelver here. Try one. Ellie looks fantastic. However, it's not going to be... It's going to upset our land curve here. 
And I guess the question is, are we safe to play the Seeker, or is it going to counter a fight effect immediately? He just have to go for it, right? More attacks. Playing a little bit slower than we'd like to against a mono green deck, that's for sure. And if there's a fight effect, then uh, I guess uh, trying Paragon will see me scry River. <laughs> Good rule. Interesting. Did not uh, see that coming. No blocks here, sadly. Four. They're apps, so. Not entirely sure what's happening here. But with the. Oh, no, they have one mana, so. Um, there's Snakes and Veil in their hand. They have access to something, for sure, or it would have immediately folded through to the next phase. It's a, it's a fight effect. It, okay, it's Nation. They had something in Sense V2, though. Okay. So. Land in. It's a second in source. Double credit. Okay, so we can do this. Pressure it up. Don't think we're getting around it any other way than the ramp. It goes, um, oh, we didn't go this way. Uh, da, 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 da. Can we just slay the right? No attacks. Buying ourselves a single turn. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. No pack tactics. I really want to destroy this, but at the same time, you know, we just have to venture. It's going to be double draw. Plant. No! Come on! We're gonna kill the Seeker instead of the Paladin. So the Mad Mage now since the Gargoyle's buffed up. In two life, I would say that they would take the Seeker, but I don't really know. Maybe they take them both. At this point, we're, just, we're playing in over our head. Take them both. That means those stuff to the paladin. See, just gets ringed. A lot of lands here. More lands than I'd like. And we're fairly light on lands to build them uh, as well, right? So. No pack tactics, unless they really go for it. Then we can just clean up the trash. What? Now that is saddening. Right, that's not a great feeling. Eat lands. I think we only have like 21 lands in the deck regularly, but I suppose Emiria's Call is playable. Gate is playable. Favorite. Do they Rangers class on the layer, I'd assume. 
Hmm. That's not good. Take a. We're missing quite a bit. Top take a land here. I'm pretty sure that's game. How could it not be? How many lands in a row has that been? It basically is. Oh my god. You know what I mean? Come on. Now. We pulled two more lands. Man, this place is flooded. Holy Toledo's. Nice. Killer unblockable character. Uh, one, two, four, five, six, seven, and ten. Eleven lands in deck only. And we still have 42 cards. Hello, good game, my friend. It was quite a beat down, but why didn't you play the uh, the pup before, Helena? Oh, I think they did. They played two of them. Uh, who knows, but... Uh, rule aggro in the job done. On the draw. I'll keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Keep it up. Um, I'm going to sneak this in. You know, star. This can be sourced from Allison. That summoning sickness off so we can start attacking. Dragons! We have no removal for this. Alright, the alchemy meta still spun. There's a lot of changes right now. We're just out here playing venture, trying to have a good time. I understand we'll probably tank our rank these video, but uh, it's the sacrifice that I make for the community, yeah? For one, and they've reduced dragons at upkeep. Four drop. For two, venture. Held it up. Half. Oh. These counter spells would be good, but we're already at a disadvantage. Problem. Pressure token. Additional two ventures next turn. We will complete handover. Um, so we're gonna minus four on their dragon to stop it from absolutely wrecking us. And uh, then we'll draw a card. If you're wondering what this is, uh, you can find a download link to the assistant in my link tree, Magic the Gathering Arena assistant. It's totally free and actually every download supports me by you cents. <laughs> so get after it. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's lots of, uh, you know, there's, there's more than just, uh, it's just like a whole, whole thing here, right? Lots, lots of stuff going on. Killing our gargoyle. Like it. Interesting. Things only a three three. Interact too aggressively. So far behind here. Dragon. An alley with uh unless they, you know, of course have another dragon. Eventually uh, draw. You just love a good quest. Why is not the worst? It would incentivize them to remove it. I mean, for spending the treasure, we may as well wait anyways, though. Because, you know, it's, it doesn't untap itself. When it's, it's gone, it's gone. Hmm. Ultimate Dragon. Fantastic. No counter spell here. Wish. 
apparently dragons are still good. Better than venture, who would have guessed? <laughs> Eliwick dies! No! He would miss you! It's not good. Not at all. How's the mic sounding? It's good, I've adjusted it. You have a new mic position. Oh? <laughs> All right. We're having fun now, aren't we? <laughs> what fun. are also not attacking this turn, so Fly can sit in hand and oh, we'll try to counter something if they tap out. A little late, it's a little late, but eh, it's fine. The spell can't counter it. Funny. Really funny. LOL. <laughs> Going first, the land looks Fine. No planes, but we have the idol, and that kind of shores everything up for us. That tap land in right out of the gates, and then we can get that Malison, drop the summoning sickness, attack, start the venture cycle. Now I hope we top deck away. It's always really cool to have that Malison grab the double room right out of the gate. Well, I mean, no, it's dead. <laughs> it's gone. We're going to leave the dungeon to spend uh, this room. We have the gargoyle in hand, so we go with the over. It's not that bad, but... Aztec. It really only costs one to adventure because it makes that treasure, so I'm not really. A lot of life gain. Seeker and idle it up. Take two more treasures and keep going. Or the two goblins may be beneficial. Let's just turbo through it. Right? So we're doubling. Uh, great. back, I guess. Argoil in play. Double draw. Great. And then uh, Argo gets a little love here. A three to defend against the Disciple. We, we went on a tear. We have Ellie. Now we go for the Mad Mage, I guess. Three mana, Torlox's disciples, sir. Four mana, they paid like for this. I'm gonna kill the Rune Seeker, it's like top priority, right? Get a Bloodthirsty Adversary here. Ooh, a double play with fire. Nice. Wow. But I guess they don't really care because every time they're putting four back. These should be white in this. That kind of. Oh. Oh. 
most likely die. App, a root seeker. Double game life. It's something. At least it's something, Mac. If four cards in hand, plus ten. Ooh. Not great. Getting hit for six. There's four more. Lightning bolts. Library. That's great. Whoa. Paladin's good. Got the Seeker, which is great. Defensively, double scry. Fates. Ooh. You're greedy. And then what's our next adventure? I don't know if I can tap. Well, actually, it would be beneficial. We could also make two treasures. And I guess we keep the more defensive creature ready to rip, right? I like shutting down their attack, but I still think just spazzing out is beneficial. Pushing ourselves through the venture or the dungeon. Okay. I mean, with Fly and the Paladin, Malison's not going to be the only card to attack, so it won't be unblockable, but they even depend. Down to 12 life. I think if we had some form of life game, we could really win some of these matches, like the aggro uh, matches, if we can get to that mid game and have survived and have like a glorious sunrise or something, right? Ability to always gain life every turn. Fantastic. Potentially even maybe entries deeper. Oh, they're doubling down on the Seeker. Oh. Oh, that is not... That is a lightning bolt! Okay. That was fine. Oh, wow! Can we get a win? I believe we can! We're so close! Going first... Three land... Tapped. Argoyle on two, Paladin on three... These are just the blue source here. Three... Uh, we're gonna go down the Pandelver and send Cargoyles. Don't have combat damage. Next turn. So, you know, we're casting our three on the Paladin. Don't really need fly. At this point. Again. Oh, get wrecked. Two, three, or five. Just make the token, I suppose. Axe. Really have much going on for us here. 
which has been fantastic. Yeah. First in play. I wish my clothes on. Adventure. Pop up the token. Swing in for two down to sixteen. Oh no. Town Razor Tyrants, still a thing. Even though it's been edited. Box. Fine. I guess we just hold up that counter spell, right? Life. And turn? Not feeling great. Spells. Wow, uh, that sucks. That's really bad. Really bad. Racks us with that land enchantment. That's really, really bad news, bears. To be honest, there. Going first, and um, I'm into it. I'll pay life, gargoyle. If you're into it, now help us get things rolling. Oh man. I'm always conservative, but we're really getting us there. That is the strategy, though. I mean, if you have the gargoyle, get really, maybe this does turn around for us. Maybe we get our first win. <laughs> Boomscar, yeah? Paladin. But if it is a Doomscar, that's something. Oh, pay with the strategy, make the token. If Eliwick, uh, her emblem helps. But it's Doomscar. If they remove our Rune Seeker, again, that's going to be a good game. <laughs> oh no. A wedding announcement? That's okay. Ow, look at us go. They'll just destroy. I mean, it sucks. I, I really want to venture with it, but. I think they kill the creature anyway, but what if they their meat hooks to only removal? Okay. And then we can help paste the meat hook this way. 
but single target bones us. Okay. One, the 13. Double draw. Who's ready for adventure? Placement of you guys. Back that ability because I'm so greedy. Awesome. Thanks some life. Double stride. That goes. That goes. All right. Have an advantage. Eliwick's gonna survive. Nice. Ooh. I say we minus two. Grab the paladin. I Play the paladin. Love an Double venture. Break the two treasures. Moon Seeker swings from five down to nine. Double stride two. Goes and goes. Goes and goes. Well, I like the curse idol. Our next dungeon. Play them. That's okay. Keep the curse idol. Uh, we're supposed to make the tokens, but they have meat hooks, but I don't want to make too many creatures for them to kill. Play the idol, venture, make the double treasures, and Malice comes in with the other treasures. Double strike three. Idol stays. Argoyle stays. Goes on top. You. Those are great. Oh, I have that up because we're still doing it. Oh, shoot. We don't have the mana for that right now. Play it first. Oh, man, that sucked. We, do, we just lost our single pay. Should have declined that. Should have declined that. I knew I'd find a way to lose this match. I knew I'd find a way. <laughs> oh no. Come back to me! We had it all figured out, but we blew up the play line. We blew up the play line. They do have the meat hook. Who's Malison? That taps them though. They make a bunch of two twos are just a one because non token. And it gets buffed up. Gargoyle for double Mad Lad. Very good. Get another match here. So we're going over to Tome of Annihilation now. D gate for free. Nice! Okay, now it's all coming together. No maximum hand size. Woo! Be a white source. Let's venture. Oh, I hope we discover something new. Oh, we don't want to double that though. Ooh, that would be bad. I will discard. Fine. Lots of lands. This is really good against them. Did it. We did it! It makes it so much more worthwhile when you actually get it after trying so many times. <laughs> oh, yes, this is how the deck works every time. Right? Oh, no. We just keep venturing. Back to tap land.
again. <laughs> then we path it up. An adventure. And then we have more ventures because we've not even attacked yet. We've not even attacked yet. Oh, the one time we get it, they won't let us. So we have a another double venture here and then the paladin, which all get doubled. So there's three more ventures. They get doubled, uh, which is quite nice. And we still have four mana for Eliwick uh, to get out there as well. So yes. Holy Toledo's. There goes your rank, bro. <laughs> We've been playing uh, some other decks in the play queue, but I feel like it's just not the same experience. It is uh, it's obviously a lot less stressful, for sure. Maybe a little bit more fun because you're running into, you know, not always those top tier meta decks, where as opposed to Mythic, uh, you're always going to see those, um, which makes things definitely a lot more competitive. Uh, however, I do think that uh, this deck is garbage. <laughs> no, 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 it's not garbage. Uh, I had to resist putting an All Runs Epiphany in the deck. I think that would be very good. Uh, really flirting with Storm, uh, the Festival as well, but everything's like four drops. Everything's three drops, so I don't think that is going to work out in our favor. Of course, I'd love your all thoughts and opinions in the comments below um, as to how can we make this deck more competitive. You know, maybe we drop Bar the Gate, take more Syncopate, really focus on Fly and Malison while protecting it, getting into that. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like we're close. And we did execute. I just think that uh, maybe we need a little bit more consistency, especially against those aggro builds. Um, like the Mono Green really bullied us and the Gruel as well. So <sighs> can't win them all. But regardless, you know, I hope you enjoyed. And if you're looking to play Venture, uh, check it out in the play queue, right? Maybe if you're in the lower ranks, this performs better. Um, I'd love some feedback there as well. But you know, regardless, let's get into card of the day before we go and say goodbye. All right. So this is something that I think is going to see play a lot more. Uh, if we can get it to focus here. Crawling Barons. Look at that kid's cuticles. When's the last time you got a petty, bro? Is it a pedicure or a manicure? I don't even know. Anyways, Faceless Haven's gone. So I think Crawling Barons is uh, the new king on the block. Right? Tap it to add colorless, pay four, put two plus one plus one counters on it, and they will uh, become a two two, well, zero zero elemental with those counters, uh, which do accumulate every time you do it. And it's still going to be a land, right? So it's going to go uh, two two four four six six and remain a land, which is pretty cool. That's a full art holographic crawling barons protected by Titan Shield. You can get 15% off in the link tree if you're interested with that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry about the performance of the deck. We're going to kill it in the next one, though, right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you soon in the next.